Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Doyle. I'm the CEO of the Drupal Association. This is the open board meeting. Um, I'm going to turn it over to our board chair, uh, Buddy, in a second. Um, I would ask if you're so inclined, I appreciate the fact that many people moved up. Obviously, we're expecting thousands to attend this session. <laughs> There's plenty of seats so up This front. actually might be one of the largest crowds we've had <laughs> for the public yeah, board yeah. meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. Um, we are, uh, so uh, we'll do an official board meeting part, and then we will close the official board meeting part, and then we'll have uh, uh, time for questions and answers uh, for the Drupal Association board. Bate, can I turn it over to you? Okay, good. Welcome. Thank you for the introduction. You might maybe think that this is going to be more exciting than it's going to be, but um, no. We are going to be doing two things in a public board meeting, which is uh, part of what we, what we do. So just to give you a brief, I'm going to introduce you to everyone, or everyone's going to introduce themselves, and hopefully tell us briefly who you are and, uh, and where maybe you're working. And then we're going to go into the board meeting itself, where we basically only have uh, two agendas. One is to vote on our strategic plan that was talked about in the Dresdnamt and also to talk about the uh, Open Web Manifesto that we're also going to vote on. Apart from that, that's going to be the public part of the meeting. But as soon as that is done, and, and we are, you know, if we have any discussions about that, it could be otherwise that's going to end. And then we're going to go into Q&A and allow you just to ask questions about uh, the Drupal Association. So does that sound good? The harder, the better. <laughs> of course. Um, so I'm going to start. Uh, Tim, you were introduced yesterday, maybe yes. briefly, you're the CEO? Yes, I'm uh, Tim Doyle, the CEO for the Drupal Association. I've been on since October. Hello, Rosa Vinana, I'm working in the European Commission in the Informatics Directorate. I'm head of sector for content management, and as content management for public websites, we are using Drupal. <laughs> and we have more than hundreds of sites in Drupal. And you live in Brussels, and you are I live Spanish. in Brussels, of course. Spanish. Very close to Lille. For, did you, were you the reason we went to Lille this year? <laughs> uh, I'm Ryan Zarama, CEO of Centauro, and uh, I build and maintain Drupal Commerce and e-commerce websites. Hi, I'm Lynn Capozzi. I'm the former CMO from Acquia. And if you were in this morning session, you met the current CMO of Acquia, Jen. Uh, and I'm excited this is my first, actually, board meeting, but I think this is my uh, I think my first DrupalCon was 2000, maybe nine, 2009. It's quite, quite some time ago. Yeah, in DC. Yeah, so happy to be here. Good. I'm Patti from Iceland, uh, the chair of the board, now since one and a half year. Uh, otherwise, I've been in the board now. This is my sixth ter uh, sixth year, meaning that my term is ending now. And otherwise, I have a company in, in Germany called OneX. I'm Dries, I think probably everybody knows me. Um, but if you don't, I'm the founder and project lead of Drupal and also on the board of directors. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mike Herschel. I'm a community elected board member. Uh, I live in Florida and I work for Edgelina. Hi, I'm Tiffany Ferris. I'm the CEO of Palantir.net. And we, I served as a board member for nine years from 2000 nine through 2017, and I'm now back for a second term, so I'm in the third year of my revised term. Hi, my name is Nick Wienhoff. I'm from Belgium. Um, I work at GitLab. I'm responsible for the contributor success, so it means like people that want to contribute to GitLab to make them successful. It's kind of a common team here in Drupal as well. Um, also, I'm the um, president of the local Drupal Association in Belgium. Uh, organizing events like Drupal Dev Days and, and other local initiatives. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening for those listening in. My name is Nikki Flores. I'm Monica Deer on Drupal.org. I'm your community elected board, meeting, board member, and I started last year. This is my second DrupalCon, and my first was last year. And I live in Lansing, Michigan. I am a technical project manager at Lullabot. That's all of us. Great, thank you. Yeah, we have uh, actually three. Uh, Rahul is missing. Maybe, hopefully, he's going to join us. Uh, he came all the way from India to be here. Um, we also have Owen, who is uh, in Australia. Currently, also due to family uh, matters, he, he didn't, was not able to come here. 
And then we have Nikhil from the uh, um, state of Georgia. Georgia. Yep. And he also couldn't come and join, but they are heavily involved in everything and they're just gonna be marked as absent from this meeting. All right, then I think we can uh, start by giving you a short introduction on uh, what we are not gonna do today is actually vote on the minutes from our last board meeting. Um, that was a little bit of technical failure on our side, so we, we were not ready with the minutes and we, couldn't, we didn't send them out in exactly seven days before, so tech, due to technical issue, we are not gonna be able to vote on those minutes. But the good news is, all our minutes are publicly available on Drupal.org. You can go there under the Drupal Association um, board and you find our minutes. We also worked on the minutes in the past and we published everything now in the end of last year or the beginning of this year. Um, it used to be like that before, then there was a short pause where that was not done, but we just changed that and reversed that. Um, so the minutes of this meeting and of our last meeting are gonna come up directly after our next board meeting. It could also be yes. that we could do and do an electrical vote on that. I think it's gonna be fine. Um, so before we start here, um, what we do as a board, we meet very regularly. And uh, one of the things that we've been talking about in probably all our meetings that we've been meeting, and including our last board meeting, where we were not voting on anything related, is our strategic plan. And that is gonna be our agenda number one today. Uh, and then followed by the Open Web Manifesto. So I think we can just officially start. And somebody is taking notes. Dana, you're here, Dana's right? taking notes, Thank yeah. you. Uh, and let's just we'll, give us a, yeah, what yeah, we we'll did. Jump, we'll jump into it. I'll uh, give the presentation on the strategic plan. I will go pretty quickly through this. Uh, the board has been meeting on this for months. Uh, and in fact, this past weekend, uh, we had a board retreat. Uh, we were together for two full days uh, diving into it. So, this is for your benefit, not the board's. They, they're very well versed in this. But I also realize that we can't go into the details in a short uh, time period. All this will be posted on our website and you can read it. So as I go quickly through it, to give you a, a sense of what we're doing, um, but not to really dive into the details. And certainly Q, during Q&A, would invite questions about it, you know, to get the board, you know, to, to give you insight into what the board's thinking is on the strategic plan. Uh, to start with, uh, we're starting, we, we looked at our vision and mission statements for the Drupal Association, and we came up with a, a, a new-ish vision. The vision is for a web to be innovative, inclusive, and open. And the mission of the Drupal Association is to drive innovation and adoption of Drupal as a high-impact digital public good, hand-in-hand -hand with our open source community. We, uh, we have we reviewed our um, uh, values, and we've kind of redefined five values that we as an organization, as a Drupal Association, want to uh, exhibit in our practices. So we want to empower makers. We want to act decisively. So there's a sense that we need to act uh, and, and decisively. We need to you know, bias for action. Um, equity, inclusion, accessibility, and justice is a value. Uh, let's, let's maybe stop there. Yep. Just go one back because this yep. is a lot of text. Just want to give people one minute time to, to read it yeah just yep. and i think that's always good i know that it's not easy to read so much but i know <laughs> maybe i can add something, yep. I, yep. I add something real quick so obviously we have the uh, drupal uh, principles and values which is a document on, on drupal at Oric. and these are the principles or the values for the community at large and these specific values um they're more they're for the staff you know, so that's the, the nuance and the difference. I'm not sure if that was clear, but that this is how the staff will make day-to-day -day decisions. Yep, thank you, Dries. Um, so we have, I said five, we have six. Uh, teaching and learning. Uh, we, uh, we seek to build programs and events to educate each other and our community. Uh, trust and accountability. Uh, we have to trust each other's work and expertise and experience, uh, and in turn, hold each other accountable. Uh, and lastly, gratitude. I think this is, uh, you know, uh, very important to me uh, that we uh, approach our work uh, with a sense of gratitude uh, and, and the work that we do and the people we work with. Which fit to, we could actually just start by saying, I see the staff, there's some of the staff. Can you raise your hand if you're from the DA staff? Yeah, the DA staff. So let's give them a good applause for doing a great job. We could do more of this. We could. And also on social media too. 
Yes. Thank you. Um, so for the strategic plan, uh, there are, if you've heard these themes yesterday, there are three objectives, and the objectives are um, our high level, uh, where we want to be in three years. It's a three-year strategic plan. Objective one is uh, innovation. Uh, we want Drupal to become the most innovative and impactful web platform in the world by enabling makers and connecting with like-minded projects to advance the open web principles of open access, open standards, free expression, and digital inclusion. Uh, under each uh, objective, we will have goals. These are our, our starting goals. Um, as they are achieved, uh, there may be new, new goals added. So under innovation, we want to triple innovation uh, contributions to Drupal in three years. We want the number of Drupal organizations that are makers, like our certified partners, to double in three years. And we want 25% uh, of the leaders in, in, uh, in the uh, uh, community in three years to be kind of first-time leaders in the community, bring in uh, new leadership. Let's okay, you're you're gonna take the examples. Yep. No, do the examples first. Do you want to do this? Or do you no, we can then go one back. Okay. Um, Sorry. So are there any anything from the board? Because we're just, you know, want to allow you to maybe tap in and bring a, is there anything special you want to mention here? You know, these are then the goals that we, you know, these are pretty high, what do you say? High level. Yeah. And we or, were, or ambitious. We are ambitious, we're, right? This, you've heard of ambitious site builders. We're trying to be an ambitious uh, innovators. And when we're talking about contributions and makers, we're talking about the agencies, the individuals, organizations supporting actual code commits, like Dries mentioned about innovation. Well, to nuance the code commits, but also non-code commits, uh, uh, as long as it's in line with the innovation and, and uh, where we want to go as a community. Where that is, I think Dries also mentioned that in his keynote, it's a thousand flowers, and we'll see where that leads us and whatever like, like picks up. Um, but it's code and non-code contributions. Great, let's go to the examples. So two examples uh, that we, again, these are examples of initiatives that we either have started or will be starting. There will be more. One is a contribution friction analysis. Look at our contribution process, how someone, the process for going from non-contributor to contributor, but then also from first-time contributor to regular contributor. And where are the friction points in that process and how do we address those to make that a smoother process? Uh, second is individual organization contribution enablement. Um, invest in creating resources and tools to directly empower, and this is what uh, Nikki was saying, individual contributors and organizational contributors, if you will. Um, uh, Pittsburgh is an example of this in a sense, connecting resources with people that have ideas and, and, and how do we connect financial resources with uh, people who can do the work and can the DA play the role of, of matchmaker in that. And I want to ask Therese because um, you said this in the weekend, maybe you can also say it, you know, tell, tell us here. Um, we talked a lot about the, the moment from when you log on to Drupal.org and then to your first commit. And like there are others doing a better job here that we can learn from, and this could be something we can do. Yeah, I think <clears throat> so. You know, one of the things we want to try and do, especially with the first item here, is if you think about between the time somebody makes a contribution, like creates a, a merge request or uploads a patch, to the time that patch actually gets committed, that can be quite long in Drupal. You know, sometimes it's years, <laughs> uh, but even for small, simple patches, it can take weeks or months. Now, with some other open source projects, sometimes it's like a couple hours or a couple days from the moment a patch is contributed to the point where the patch is kind of becomes part of the development branch of the project. And so what we like to do is we would like to understand sort of that life cycle of, let's, I'm just going to call it a patch for simplicity here, but like we want to understand you know, how long it takes um, and, and what it's waiting for. Sometimes it can be reviewers, accessibility reviewers, UX reviewers, architect reviewers, um, you know, whatever it is, right? We want to understand all the steps and then figure out what can we do to make these steps shorter. Because the belief is that if we can make that very short, if you can go from contribution to commit in a relatively short time frame, 
not only will we accelerate innovation, but also it will become more appealing uh, for people to start contributing to Drupal. So um, it's actually quite common for larger organizations to really study that process, that life cycle, and to try and optimize it, continuously optimize it and make it faster and better. And sometimes that can mean a process improvement in how we make decisions. Sometimes it might mean, ooh, a lot of patches get stuck, and I'm just going to make up an example. It's not based on real data. But, you know, ooh, a lot of patches get stuck on accessibility reviews. Well, maybe then we need to figure out how do we create capacity so we have more people able to do accessibility reviews. So now it's more of a people or a capacity solution. Uh, you know, you get the idea. Yeah, maybe to add to that, um, what Dries just mentioned, that's my day job at GitLab. Um, and one thing that we're doing there is to um, yeah, do a study, a user study, on first-time contributors on where they get stuck or how they even enter. Um, I think also the learnings from the study would be very useful for Drupal to figure out like, how do people even get there before they create the patch or before they create the issue or create the merge request. We don't know a lot about that. Um, I think Alejandro or Alex is also here, maybe. I don't, I don't know if he's here. Um, he joined session. recently the Drupal Association. Um, and um, I believe that he will spend like a lot of effort and, and time into exactly these kind of uh, yeah, challenges. Yep, that'll be his role. So that's, that's objective number one, innovation. Objective number two is around marketing. And uh, the Drupal brand, or, or the objectives for the Drupal brand to, to be recognized as a platform of choice among ambitious end users in business, the public sector, and beyond. Um, we have four goals. Um, Lynn and Tiffany and Rahul are on our marketing uh, working group. If I could put you on the spot, have you speak to what thoughts are on this uh, objective? Sure. So as part of the plan, we will have, you know, as Tim said, a very specific objective around developing a marketing plan. Um, but also just want to make sure that we, we convey that we're going to be doing a lot of work in between. So it's not like we're going to wait a year for a big plan to drop on the table, right? We're going to be have this marketing plan. Who are we targeting? How are we going to get there? What are we doing for exposure and so forth? So um, I think it'll be important that we'll be able to have um, specific goals over the next couple of years that will meet into the plan. And really anxious to reinforce the idea of a marketing maker. It's not just code, right? It's also marketing as well, so, and involving a lot more people from the community. So um, these are the goals that we set out, and we'll continue to monitor them on both a monthly and then yearly basis. Yep, thank you. You know, one thing I just wanted to highlight with this is that it makes it very clear that part of the focus of the association is product marketing. We're not just marketing ourselves or marketing in DrupalCon. The entire strategic plan makes it existential, the success of the project, to the success of the association. And we're tying those much more closely together than we ever have before. No, thank you. That's a great point. Um, I'm also, um, uh, you know, I think what's being pointed out is we have a great board. Uh, we have a lot of expertise in the, all these objectives that we, you know, that we need to pursue. Um, so it's, it gives me a lot of confidence in our ability to do this. The third objective, well, let me give you two examples. Oh, look. We're going to show a video. This is the new D.org. I forgot this was in the presentation. Let me just show. So we are rolling out. This is supposed to go again. There we go. Um, we will be rolling out a new D.org uh, by the end of the year. Um, and this gives you a preview into what it will look like. Uh, part of our efforts will be focused on taking this from the where it is today. This Visually, this is how it will look or something similar to this but really focus on the different audiences we're trying to reach. Lynn mentioned marketers. When you come to d.org, how are they welcomed into that? How are they mark how, how, you know, how do they find a website um, uh, you know, for what they need and what they need to do to convince their, their folks to invest in Drupal? This is all um, uh, our design partners, Third and Grove, so special thanks to them for doing that. Uh, again, we hope to have this launched uh, by the end of the year. Let's go to objective three, uh, fundraising. So we have innovation, marketing, the objective three is uh, fundraising. And the objective is for the Drupal Association to participate in a leadership role in, in the Drupal project uh, with a philanthropic approach to funding that advances the project and the community. Um, there's really two, two pieces to this. One is that, we, uh, that the association has a, an, an active role and a seat at the table in the Drupal project roadmap. Um, and then second, uh, is the tripling of our, our budget in three years. It's pretty ambitious. Um, but the goals that the board has, um, 
that they've made very clear to me, uh, very ambitious goals. We need a very ambitious revenue uh, source to do that, to fulfill that. So um, that'll be a, a big part of our ability to deliver on the strategic plan is getting the revenue sources in uh, to be able to fund the things we want to do. That's the strategic plan. And then I don't know if we have oh, two examples. I'm meant to give examples for everyone. One is we are hiring a, a new director of philanthropy whose sole uh, focus will be on uh, developing philanthropic relationships. That's a funding source that we have not explored in the past. Um, so it's not just grant writing and receiving grants. Yes, it's that, but it's also building the philanthropic relationships and turning the DA into a, uh, a, a, a association that is philanthropic minded. So we have the shared values with the folks that are, that, that are funding us. Um, uh, and then second, and we'll talk about the Open Web Manifesto in a second, is really talking about what the Drupal, what the social impact of Drupal. You know, I think we all know this, but how do we, one, um, Dries mentioned, uh, our designation as a public good. That begins to communicate to the outside world what is the social impact of Drupal. Uh, the Open Web Manifesto is a statement about our belief about the social impact of Drupal. Um, and those are gonna be important for, uh, for funders. And that's, that's the strategic plan. So we, need to do, we do need to take a vote. Yeah, so first maybe are there any discussions or questions or anything we need to add? From a board? We just need a motion. So we need a motion. I, m I move. Mike. No, you have to do, make the motion first, right? To do what? Mike. Thank you. I, I would like to make a motion to adopt. Second. And um, is everyone in? No. All in favor? All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. I, I, I find these traditions I, amazing. Like, yeah. I, in motion, favor it. <laughs> I know. But uh, that means that that's done, right? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Nobody was against this. Thank yeah, you. No objections. All right. All right. Have that noted, so, Dana? Yes. <laughs> All right. So the and strategic plan is approved. How will we communicate it to the rest of the world? Is that planned? Yes. Or? So we'll be posting the strategic plan on the website, and there will be a, uh, a blog post and uh, a communication out of the new <laughs> DA strategic plan. All right, second. Are you ready to go to the second? Oh, the, op the second thing we're going to vote on is the Open Web um, Manifesto. This, the next five slides also have a lot of text. So again, the manifesto itself will be posted on our, our um, uh, on d.org, uh, and there'll be a, a message about it. Um, I'll go through the slides a little bit. I'm not going to read them. I'll let you. I'll go slowly so you can read them. Um, the manifesto won't be in a format of a, of a presentation, it'll be in an actual uh, document. Um, the reason for doing this was to have a public, many open source communities have uh, a manifesto of some sort. Um, as, we pursue, as, as we pursue philanthropic funding, um, we wanted to capture what, what, you know, what is the Drupal Association's belief vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the open web and why are we here? And you saw that in our, in our vision, uh, the vision for an open inclusive web. Um, so we really have uh, kind of s s five statements uh, an open web, uh, that, that help us define what we believe an open web is. It's built on freedom. It's defined by decentralization. It thrives on inclusion. It requires participation. And it exists for empowerment. These are the kind of the, the high level principles that we assert an open web is all about. I can move on. So to live up to that definition of open web, um, you know, we believe that it, you know, we must, our efforts in supporting the Drupal project and Drupal um, is that Drupal must uh, be uh, designed to protect and not exploit data, uh, personal data. Uh, it must enable the next generation of innovators and entrepreneurs to compete effectively. And it must be resilient to a changing world and not controlled by a select few. Uh, the open web must be more than an ideal or set of principles to achieve its full potential as a global digital public good. The open web must prove it's better, it's a better web. So not just an open web for the sake of an open web, but a better web. If I didn't want, we're going, the board has seen this, so this, <laughs> if there's anything to say from the board, I would just ask you to chime in, but again, um, the board has seen this, so uh, uh, this is not new to them. Um, our global community makers and users create the code, solve the problems, and form the bonds to sustain it. Our creativity enables flexible, seamless digital experiences. 
our diversity unlocks solutions and new opportunities, and our integrity ensures independence and inclusion for all. Um, so, you know, the Open Web Manifesto is really uh, designed to be a statement that the association is making, uh, on, you know, in a sense, on behalf of the community, uh, for uh, for the for the for those of us out or those outside the community, those of us who are, you know, want to understand what Drupal is about again from a social impact state, uh, sense. Um, we identify who those end users are, government, educational institutions, not-for-profits, enterprises, companies. Um, the other stakeholders are the makers that contribute to Drupal, um, and really that the public that use Drupal every day. So uh, most people don't know about Drupal, uh, even though if they're using it every day through websites. Hey, Tim. One yes. of the things I want to call out about yep. this particular slide is that this is the closest, I've, uh, at least in my tenure at the association, that we've ever come to defining the community. I think community means something we intuitively understand what that is, but this is us really defining it for the first time. Great point. Thank you for that. That's, uh, that's true. Ryan. And one of the things that uh, excites me about the Open Web Manifesto is that it helps me situate my company and my vision for my contributions to Drupal within a broader mission. Um, we've always said that Centauro powers the future of commerce without compromise, where merchants go to market on their own terms, unconstrained by their platform, and empowered to do what's right by their customers. And that's, you know, a, a loaded kind of vision or mission that's, that, that is pitting us against proprietary platforms, where, you know, trading the private information of my customers is like the cost of doing business on Shopify. Um, and so, so like, uh, my hope is that, that other Drupal companies, uh, agencies, contributors will also begin to, you know, actually use this language to communicate their own visions and their own missions. Uh, I think that will, that will kind of breed tighter alignment um, and hopefully, you know, again, be part of what increases contribution to, like, Drupal as a whole. No, that's a great point, and as this is published, you know, exactly, we're encouraging companies to use this language in their own, in their own work. Maybe a very short uh, yep. comment too. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about how the process was. You know, sure. just remind us, like, how was the process of creating this document? Sure, so we, we started with uh, internal conversations at the DA, then we went out to the community, we, we did a survey uh, in, I believe, January, went out um, to the community, I don't know off the top of my head how many, we got a lot of responses. Uh, that informed 90% uh, of this document. Uh, then we went to the board, we cleaned it up, we tried to put it into an organized, cohesive um, uh, document, uh, and that's what you see before here. So for anyone in the audience that participated in that survey, thank you. That we, you know, we started with what we thought, and then we got lots of new ideas and lots of new language, which was very helpful. Um, so this really was a, a kind of grassroots initiative in terms of getting input from the community and, and then finalizing. Thank you. Yeah. And maybe this, the, the point is like none of this stuff probably surprises anyone yeah. uh, because this is what we've been living, you know, throughout the values and principles of Drupal and just how we're doing things. But uh, we now have it written. And <laughs> right. We can actually, That's right. You know. So should we then, is there any more questions or discussions that need to happen? Should happen? Good. I move that we adopt the Open Web Manifesto. A second. I'll second that. Uh, is any everyone in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Oh. Yeah, not, not opposed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Then that means that that's <laughs> also clear. That's passed. Yes. Voted on. So at this, yes. Um, Dana registered. Thank you. <laughs> so at this point, uh, the we can end if. With approval of the board, we can end the official board meeting and move into Q and A. That would unless be great. Anything, unless there's anything else, the we board. have exactly 20 minutes left. Yep. This is great. Um, thank you, Susan, to bring your little one. Yep. <laughs> can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. So just let me note the the official board meeting is over at 11:59. 11 thank you. Um, so that ends the official board meeting. Now we'll go to Q and A. There's a microphone um, at the at the center, and you can bring a baby up if you want. Awesome. <laughs> um, so I'm excited to hear that there's a marketing committee on the board, and I'm wondering what the marketing committee's plans are to um, 
collaborate with the Promote Drupal initiative on the marketing uh, strategy that you have. Th thank you for the question, and we want to work with the group immediately. So it's one of our to-dos, actually, so I'm going to catch up with you um, uh, before we go. So definitely want to be, make sure that we kind of pull those groups together okay. and work Sounds together. Great. Yep. Thank you. And the third item in the second objective um, was specifically around building capacity, and we see Promote Drupal as a key part of that capacity. So making sure that the, there's a lot of alignment between the effort and, um, and, and the vision for where this is going. And, and Christina on the Drupal Association staff is the staff lead for the working group and you know participates in Promote Drupal, so it's specifically tasked with uh, coordinating with those groups. Next Hi. question. Hello, George Demet. Um, so I have a question that um, I'm going to try and ask a kind of a tough and complex question. So I absolutely love, love what I'm seeing up here. This is a really fantastic strategic plan. I'm really, really happy to see that fundraising is included as part of it. Um, this is not the first uh, strategic plan that the uh, Drupal Association has had, and it's not the first ambitious uh, strategic plan that the Drupal Association has had. Um, and historically, it, it seems like the association has uh, struggled uh, in terms of being able to execute on past strategic plans due to lack of resources, funding, et cetera. So I'm curious, um, given the ambition, ambitious goals here, um, how you're going to be measuring progress against them, what kind of KPIs you're looking at, how you might make adjustments if it looks like certain things aren't coming in where they um, need to be? Uh, let me, and I'll invite board members to chime in too, but George, great question. One thing that was left out of this PowerPoint that is part of the strategic plan, we do have specific measures. So, we, so those will be published and you'll see those. So I can talk about those uh, in some detail as we need to. So that was left out of this presentation, but those are in there. Um, I don't know if any other board member wants to chime in on like the larger question of, um, or if you had a larger question about uh, how ambitious this is and can we do it. Mm -hmm. I can, so it starts and ends also with funding. So the part of the, the third part is a little bit, you know, we have to do, if, if we are gonna accomplish number one and two, we need to figure out a way to get funding. And we've been successful in the previous years to, to be on, you know, on a very lean budget, you know, being run on, on almost zero, do DrupalCon things to DrupalCon here in North America. We are actually, we normally have profit, so we can fund the engineering team. We have our supporting partner programs, but we are also seeing that we need to go and, and look for something more. Um, and there are grants out there that we haven't even tried to uh, search, like apply for. And uh, that was also why we need to have something like the Open Web Manifesto written down so we can actually go to these grants institutions and ask them for if they want to uh, help us to accomplish this, what we are trying to do. Does that answer your question? Can I, can I jump in a little bit? Yeah. I think, sure. you know, having been through many of the strategic plans <laughs> that we've put out, there are a couple things that stand out for me about um, that was different about this process. Um, so the executive committee worked to start to flesh this out and used it as the basis for the hiring process. So Tim was specifically hired as, as you know, if you were in the, the Dries note, yeah, you might know some of the reasons why we saw Tim as a fantastic CEO to align and, and to execute and to, to bring about the reality described in the strategic plan. Um, that was a very different part of the process. Um, previously, the, the board would be asked for input and then the strategic plan would come back to us. Um, and then obviously, some of the strategic plans were limited by resources and so the ambition was really tight and others were very blue sky but but lacked the ability to execute it on it so i think that the coupling of the the ceo search with the development of the strategic plan was very important and it was very, it was board driven so a lot of the, the key top lines came directly from the board before tim was even hired and he was hired in specifically um, for the strategic plan got it thank, thank you, you. Um, yeah, next question. Hi, uh, my name is Wim. Um, I work for Acquia and I have a bunch of questions actually, but I'm gonna just ask one so everyone can ask some. I, this is the first time I'm attending one of these and I actually love that pretty much all of you, pretty much every one of you actually chimed in at some point. That was really cool to see. Um, my main question is, uh, one of the things that came up were um, 
an analysis of contribution friction. Um, but to my knowledge, at least one of the things is actually known that I experience every day, and it's the transition to GitLab, um, which in and of itself is fine. But because the Drupal .org instances are not using the best practices for GitLab, actually a lot of problems arise along the way. So I would personally think that addressing those first, which is a known problem, would make a ton of sense. So I'm curious if there's insight or um, plans around that. Maybe before we answer as a, as a board, uh, I would suggest, suggest you talk to Fran and Brendan over there, because um, that's also their day job, uh, and to make those decisions uh, autonomously on like what to do first, um, how to act on these emergencies. Um, that doesn't mean that if you look at a three-year plan, it's not like it's strategic to look beyond those frictions, yep. um, and then to understand like once we have that migration, what's next? Should we? And that's a good question that was asked in Slack earlier. Um, should we change some of the Drupalisms, or should we keep them? Um, having issue forks, for example, is very specific to the Drupal development cycle, but that does not exist in the GitLab or GitHub world. That doesn't mean that it's bad. Maybe we're just very innovative um, and we should keep them. Um, but that's uh, not, not a decision for the board to make uh, in and a way. Right. But, uh, yeah, but I, what I we should are, actually talk to Fran. Uh, yeah, but what we are actually deciding with this is that we are giving the DA staff priorities. So they actually, and one of the priorities is to enable the contributors and make them, you know, so. So it will align to exactly what you're saying. And now the DEA staff will know, OK, we, this is a priority from the board. Right. And that's something that we are really excited about, because that has maybe not been before a right. priority. Makes uh, sense. Yeah. Thank you. And maybe to add like one small thing there, um, although I don't have decision power on what goes into GitLab, um, I'm happy to be like a liaison between the two and to figure out like where can we land. Um, the team that I, I lead at GitLab it also now started with a community fork, um, which suddenly exposes problems in the product that are very similar to the uh, challenges that Drupal has. So hopefully that will lead to a better world from other open source projects as well. Right. I'm curious what comes out of this next. Uh, I mean, like the other friction points, um, but I'm glad to hear it, that you're well aware of this. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you for your question. Hello. My name is Matthew Tift. And one thing I can tell is different is we're not lined up in chairs around you in a table in some small room like we have been in previous years for open board meetings. So I can tell that's different. And with the strategic plan, my question had to do with how different organizations do strategic planning differently. And oftentimes, if you put a ton of emphasis into a strategic plan, they'll use it so you can literally print it out and the fundraising folks can go to prospective donors and it'll be like a 10-year plan that they stick with for a long time period. Do you have a, a time frame with this? And, or do you see this more as like a strategic plan that might evolve and be a little bit different next year? That's a good so question. It is a three-year plan. Um, and, but I, according to my experience with the Drupal Association, you know, when things change, we will adapt. So I do think that uh, if we figure out in one year from now that this is not a good plan, then we should not stick to the plan just because we had to stick to the plan. If that's a, you know, but that is today, as of today, this is a three-year plan starting, starting now. Right, and we use the OGSM objective goals, strategies, measures, model, um, and that the objectives probably won't change. I mean, ideally, there's so much thought, these are the objectives. Goals generally don't change, but they can change if, if uh, certainly if you achieve them, you can move on. Uh, strategies and measures will change. You know, how do we triple innovation uh, contributions? Let's try A, that's not working, that's a strategy. Oh, that's not working, let's try B, that's, that's not working. But the goal, the triple, and the objective of innovation probably won't change, and, you know, that's how, the, how we're thinking about it. You know, and, and to build on your, your uh, concept of the, of the time scale, right? Um, we had a board member for many years, uh, Don Benjamin, who really wanted us to make a 100-year strategic plan, right? So I, I appreciate the, 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 the time scale question. Three years felt about right, given, you know, where we're coming out of this pandemic, and we are specifically staking ground around both product innovation and product marketing. So we want to see where that goes, and then I think, you know, at the end of that, we can reassess 
where we're at and, and whether we're ready for a five-year, a 10-year, or a 25, or maybe, in Donna's vision, a 100-year plan. But I think right now this felt like the right, the right time scale to see how we're gonna do those things and make it really clear that there's an urgency to this and we need to be successful for a vision of success in a relatively short amount of time. Thank you all very much. I'm smiling under my mask. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Lawrence, longtime DA member, first time meeting attendee. Thank wow, you. Awesome. Board meeting attendee, I should okay. say. <laughs> Board meeting Great. attendee. Uh, my first DrupalCon was San Francisco. Um, I just, real quick, if, if, if Pittsburgh or something like Pittsburgh were to happen again, who should I contact or what Slack channel should I get on to volunteer to help administer that? Because I do have some experience. I'm also in the association space. So we, we have a, a competition that's about, you know, a, a few tens of thousands per applicant gets down to a few dozen. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, you should contact me right now. That's easy. Um, you did, right. Okay. So <laughs> I'd love to get with you. <laughs> right, you just contacted me. I'll come with see you, you after. Quickly. Yes, exactly. That'd right, be great. Thank you. thank you. Thanks for offering to help. Yeah, yeah awesome. and I was, I was just going to say you can reach out to me. I'm M. Herschel in Drupal Slack. If you just want to throw ideas, and I can, I can direct you to the right person, too. Hey, Anup. Hey, uh, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Anup John. Uh, I have a question uh, to the board around um, specific things that we are trying to do uh, as part of the strategic plan to en enlarge or broaden uh, the community and its abilities. Um, as it stands, we are facing a lot of struggle in terms of organizing contribution. So how are we, uh, as a formal body, trying to put together the structures in place to help community organize themselves better so that we can contribute better to the Drupal project and community, one. And then are there specific uh, measurable goals that we are after around the specific community aspect? Are you, like, can I, I'm, I'm trying to understand exactly, are you trying to, are you asking how we are gonna be working on a plan so we can actually get the community to execute no, are, uh, how are we, yeah. how are we supporting, how are we planning to support the community in terms of structures and systems and systematically putting together things, right? That will help the community organize. Say, how do we bring new developers to the table? How do we, how do we make Drupal more accessible to new students in universities? Why are we not bringing students from, say, CMU here, right? Like, uh, how are we actually um, reaching out, not just to the consumers, but also to broaden uh, the community and reignite the kind of passion we had maybe 10 years back. So I think one thing, to, uh, everything you're saying I think is, is really important. They're very important questions about how we're gonna do things. And it's important to understand that we are a strategic board and what you're talking about are tactics. So the board doesn't direct the staff around those tactics. What we do is we set out and we say these are the objectives and these are the goals and this is how we're gonna measure it. And we absolutely trust our, you know, the, the Drupal Association staff to use appropriate means to get there. So this board can't answer that. Tim and the staff, I'm sure, will be answering those questions over time in a public way. But the, it wouldn't be appropriate for the board to weigh in on that. Got it, got it. But I wanted to ask specifically whether community itself is a big part of the strategic plan, right? And are there goals in the strategic plan that specifically addresses the community aspect of who we are? So I think I will weigh in on that. There's a couple. There's not a there's not a specific goal about about what you're asking about. There is a, there is a goal if you notice on new leadership uh, into the project and into the into the community. That is designed to bring back some, bring in some energy, some new ideas to innovate. Um, uh, so that's that gets to it. Um, but when you see on the strategic plan, that doesn't mean the day-to-day -day work of the Drupal Association stops and all we focus on are on these three things. So as you know, we run a lot of things to support the community. Those things will continue. These are our, those guys kind of keeping the lights on type of work that we do. Um, these are the strategic, the strategic goals about where we want to go with the things that the board felt are most important to work on with the project and with the community. I think also to give a slightly higher level answer, I think what makes a project compelling to more people and specifically to 
people early in their professional career, I think is one, a great innovative product, right? People want to work with great products and they want to bet their career on a product that is growing, is used a lot, seems to have the right momentum. So that's innovation. So that is a direct tie to that strategic objective. And the other piece is people want to be part of something engaging and fun and you know all those things, right? Like, and so that is tied also to innovation, but obviously also to marketing. So I do think the innovation and the marketing focus should lead to attracting more people to the project. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, my second question was uh, about uh, taking a seat in the Drupal product roadmap was one of the things that was mentioned and I found it really interesting. I was wondering if you could expand a little bit on like how, what would that look like concretely? Like where would the, what, what information source would be used to choose to implement it in a certain way? So to have a seat at the product roadmap, that's a, you know, how are we gonna do that? Um, I think that we, we do have a seat in many decisions that are being made in the Drupal project because we have to, you know, that we, we provide the infrastructure, right? So, um, but there is not necessarily a, um, you know, we are not necessarily, we are maybe today, the engineering team is being called in when they are needed and they are then asked to do the job. And what the engineering team then, of course, also sometimes struggles with maybe is that what's then the priority? You know, are we gonna do that in front of that, in front of that? And being part of those conversations and having a seat at the table when the core committers and trees and the, those who are running the strategic initiatives, if there can be an official way of that we can have a seat at the table and listen and understand so we can actually make plans so the Drupal Association staff can make plans of how to actually execute that. That's going to reduce the friction as well because the yep. core committers, including you probably, Vim, you know, sometimes yep. it's hard because you're blocked by the Drupal Association and vice versa. So I, I think that um, just being part of that process would help a lot in both directions. Yeah, cool, interesting. I didn't realize it was about that reducing friction aspect. I thought it was more about introducing new directions for Drupal, so um, yeah. that makes sense. I mean, I could see a future if the Drupal Association is able to build capacity through like fundraising efforts, et cetera. Like today we have like what, 12 to 14 core committers? I forgot the exact number, but it's something, something around 12. But I could see a future where, you know, there's maybe several core committers, additional core committers or uh, maintainers or, you know, like accessibility reviewers full-time employed by the Drupal Association in addition to the existing ones, not as a replacement <laughs> of the existing ones, but in addition to the existing ones, just to help us accelerate uh, a variety of different things. So that could be an example of uh, a example. I don't, I'm not saying that's necessarily the outcome, but that could be a possible outcome that translates to having a seat at the table, right? Cool, that sounds all very interesting. Curious to see how it will play out. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, Christoph Weber. I'm with Matthew Tift, I'm all smiles under my mask. The one thing I noticed today and sort of sensed is that there's a much tighter coupling between the board, the Drupal Association and the community at large. And I really love that aspect of what sort of surfaced and bubbled up from everything you showed and talked about today. And I'm hoping this is your secret fourth objective. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll just say I'm glad you noticed it because I feel that there is a lot more coupling and it's being new. I knew I came into a board that's um, uh, uh, very aligned in where they want to go, and but to see it coming across as they're also aligned with the community and and with the association is very gratifying. So thank you. Hi there, Doug Green. Um, I have two questions. I'll see if I can get them out. The first, I noticed there's a change between having a managing director and a CEO, and uh, I'm not sure if the strategic initiative intentionally came out of that, that, but I'd like to hear more how that decision or what that change actually means. And the second question has to do with finances. I went on the website to see what the latest financial reports were, and, and the last one I saw was 2021. It seems, you know, I've seen the board or the Drupal Association go through a 
tight times and, and it seems that you're in expanding time and you've got a great vision here, but I'm wondering what your cash situation is and how much, uh, uh, how much of, of a runway you have to execute that based on your cash position. Because it appears to me that you're starting to ramp up and start, start spend more money and we're just coming out of the pandemic. And I know that Drupal cons have been a major source of finance and we're, we, you know, you, you were probably hurt a little through that. So the first question about why did we change the name from an executive director to um, a CEO? Um, that was actually part of it uh, was internal, uh, the leadership team, they, were, they started to use the, the naming of a CFO and a COO. Um, and the, the person who was then in charge was always called an executive director. So one of the things that we also thought that that would maybe just not fit to how, how they were talking about themselves in the leadership team, that it was a CTO and a COO and a, an executive director, so we felt that it was new, uh, normal, good. Um, secondly, what we also um, thought that we would also maybe attract a little bit different type of people when we would put out the ad, when uh, it's just an add-on. <laughs> I'm not saying that was the reason, but when we were searching for a CEO, um, and now I've been part of this process now twice, I was also part of the, the search for the executive director that was before Tim, and I do think that that helped in the process when we were searching for a person that we actually put out the name CEO out there. Uh, it's a little bit more attractive sometimes to people. On the other hand, people that are very familiar to nonprofit organizations, they think that, uh, or they are maybe more you know, used to executive director. So it's a little bit of a, just a, a touch. It was not maybe more details to it than that. So that was the first question. But, but no real change in responsibilities. It was kind of a... No, there was not a change in the responsibility of the executive director and the CEO. It was just a name title change. But the second question was towards the financials. Yeah, the financial. So let me answer at a high level, but you should know that our, uh, we just finished an audit. We get audited every two years. And as a not-for-profit, we, we are required to make those audits public, so that will be public soon. Um, it's called the 990 audit or not? Yeah, the, well, it's, yeah it's the IRS 990 form, which is public. And then we also just publish our, our internal audits also, just uh, for uh, good practice. Um, but to your point of your question, uh, I think we're out of the pandemic with very stable finances. It's lean. It's, it's not sufficient to fulfill the ambitions of the board but we have uh, nine months in reserves. There is a 200,000, there's actually uh, 600,000 in a board designated fund, and that's where you're seeing things happening. It's starting with that board designated fund that was you know, kind of um, set aside for new initiatives. So we are in a uh, stable financial condition, uh, and uh, which I really appreciate the previous executive director and CFO that really stabilized the finances through, through the pandemic. Um, and we have a little bit of money to begin to invest on some of these initiatives, but we'll need to raise more to hit, to hit the ambitions. Especially where the Pittsburgh funds come from, right? Like with Come On. Yeah, so the, the uh, Drupal Association uh, made the decision to invest 30000 in Pittsburgh. It came from the board designated funds to kind of spur that idea. We are um, out of time, but we have yep. two more questions, if that is okay. Uh, otherwise, please approach us afterwards. So thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. My name is Isaiah Jokonya. Uh, mine is not a question, it's a compliment. <laughs> yeah, I would like just to thank you, the Drupal community and the Drupal Association about the newsletter. It's so informative, it always stay up to date. So the newsletter is really helpful with the information on it. I really appreciate it. Keep me stay up to date every weekly. And the other one, it was the, about the Open Web Manifesto. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, it's really a powerful. The point which I really liked is the one for its existence for empowerment. The one which says, the open web is fueled by humanity, collective quest for information, connection, and progress, and strengthening every individual right to choice, privacy, and security. Thank you for that, it's a compliment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Arun Baker from the Drop Times, and uh, yeah, I do want to commend the board on the Open Web Manifesto. Uh, it does mention the word world and uh, global reach, I believe, in terms of its impact. 
So this in itself is quite ambitious given that Drupal is probably has the most traction in North, Amer in North America. So I did meet a young man from South Sudan who's participating in DrupalCon thanks to, uh, I believe, sponsorship from the Drupal Association. Yep. And this is quite uh, commendable and is probably an example of some of the work that is being done that some of us are not even aware of. Uh, so my question is, is there, um, you know, are there strategic initiatives or objectives that will bring Drupal to parts of the globe where it is currently being underutilized? This person from Sudan said that it's not being used, used in his country, for example. So as a digital public good, um, you know, how is this being addressed is my question. Um, I, I have one point. The new website is going gonna, is gonna to be multilingual, as I understand it, right? So that, yeah, that is correct? We want it to be, that, yeah. We don't have it back to oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I apologize. So maybe the question is a little bit more, again, here towards the staff, in a sense yes. of, like, are there any, any things that we are doing to, to get, like, Drupal more adopted and that we get, can get more um, right. developers right. And, and contributors? Yeah, so... Uh, outside, outside of the United States and Europe? Yeah, so, uh, as I said yesterday, I've been talking to a lot of CEOs of our certified partners. Um, the ones outside the U.S. have, you know, raised to me that there's a sense in the globe that uh, the, uh, the Drupal Association itself can be very kind of U.S. focused. So we are making steps to try to be less U.S., solely U.S. focused, uh, and to invite um, uh, kind of global, you know, the global community into the work that we do. Um, you met Denaya, who's a State Department fellow that worked with us for six weeks, and, and we were able to provide a scholarship to come here. We have our Discover Drupal program, which is currently just run in the U.S., but the hope is that we can run that, uh, and that seeks to um, bring folks that would have uh, uh, obstacles overcome to get into Drupal, to train them up on Drupal and bring them in. You know, the, the ultimate goal of that would be to make that global. Um, and I think in the initiatives of tripling innovation, I think just inevitably we're going to have to look outside the U.S. We're going to have to look global of how do we get there. Um, so. Um, Part of the process will be identify what are the specific strategies that we want to have that will help us triple innovation or marketing. And I'm, I'm very confident many of those will involve how do we uh, expand the reach of Drupal to uh, areas of the globe that are not, a, you know, it's not the adoption's not there or the contribution's not there. I wanna, I wanna say something. Like there is one thing that actually is on my heart regarding that what you are explicitly talking about. When you go and you talk to the community, you realize that there are so many things happening in the community where we at the Drupal Association, we could actually take and learn what they are doing. So we, one good example is in Finland. In Finland, they are actually teaching Drupal in universities. They have all kinds of programs of like teaching and, and, and they have like, and then they're basically, after that, they go into the job market. So they have created a model that works in Finland to get people to be excited about Drupal. Um, we at the Drupal Association, we need to have those conversations and we need to have people in our staff that can have all of these conversations, take these programs and then bring them out to other countries and see how we, if we can be successful there. And that is also one of the things that we are talking about here and I think that we are not doing enough of that, uh, but we should be, you know, we are hopefully going to be doing more. So thank you for the question. Yep, thank you. Um, so thank you. Uh, we have to conclude the Q&A. Um, I do want to thank the board for um, for this for participating in this session, but also for uh, the, the retreat we had over this weekend. Um, I am, as I said before, very gratified to have such a strong board. So if you could help me join in thanking the board, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if you have any questions, you feel free also to come by and ask it here. Thank you. Thank you.